Okay, following the advice of a really good friend of mine, Jai Cologne. Thanks, buddy. Um, I am redoing this video. Uh, there were some uh, mistakes and errors that were just too much to edit out in the, in the last one. So, what we're doing here is we're describing the differences in several different striker-fired firearms versus hammer-fired firearms. In this case, I have, uh, for my striker-fired example, I have a Ruger EC9S. And for hammer, I have a Ruger SR-22. So the reason I want to go over this is striker-fired firearms like this Ruger, Horus's striker-fired uh, guns, the Glocks, they all have the same takedown procedure that requires pulling the trigger. Now, why that can be a problem is if you've gone through your clearing procedures incorrectly in the first place, you're at risk of firing uh, that firearm. There's a YouTube video of a gentleman who does precisely that because he improperly follows clearing procedures and ends up with a firearm and, and it fires. Negligent discharge is what that's called. So, first step of firearm safety, of course, is to always treat every firearm as if it were loaded. Some have said that you should take that a step further to always know the condition or status of your firearm. That is, I know that firearm is in fact loaded. In fact, this Ruger EC9S is in fact loaded, chambered, ready to go. The Ruger SR22, I happen to know, is unloaded. However, I'm still going to treat both of them as if they're loaded. The next step of firearm safety is to always point your firearm in a safe direction unless you're defending yourself or others. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this firearm. I'm going to unload it and uh, then we'll move on with the procedures. So I'm going to secure my firearm and very first step, and this is the step that if you end up doing backwards, this produces a dangerous situation with your firearm, okay? So first step, remove your magazine. As you can see, it's loaded, all right? Second step is to clear the chamber. So I'm going to pull my slide to the rear and I'm gonna push up on my slide lock to ensure that the slide locks open. Here's the round that was in the chamber. And now I'm gonna actually look down in the chamber with my eyes. I'm going to reach in, check it with my finger, uh, this is called a tactile uh, check. I'm also going to check up in the magazine well. If I could put my finger in all these spots and not touch anything, if I can look down the barrel and I can see the light coming through the barrel, I have an unloaded firearm, okay? But I'm still going to treat it as if it's loaded. Now, where the procedure goes wrong is, and I will go ahead and show you what that looks like. So here I have a magazine with ammunition. I'm going to go ahead, load the weapon. I now have a weapon. It's got a round in the chamber, okay? Now, let's say I do my procedure backwards. I'm going to go ahead and rack the slide. Oh look, I have uh, the round that was in the chamber, right? So I'm good. So then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop the magazine. Okay, great. So I've now dropped the magazine. I've now emptied the chamber. Here's the problem. I did that backwards. What happened when I cleared the chamber, when I racked the slide back, it put another round into the chamber. Observe. I'm going to go ahead, open it up. No magic here. No David Copperfield. That round was in the chamber because I did this clearing procedure backwards. Okay? Don't do that. I'm going to show you why, especially with a striker-fired weapon, that is extremely dangerous, okay? So, I'm gonna move on, move on with my procedures. So since I just had ammunition in this, I'm going to finish my clearing, okay? I'm gonna look down my, my barrel into the chamber, try to see light, I'm gonna put my finger in there, I'm gonna put my fingers up in the magazine well, I make sure this thing's empty, okay? Now, with this firearm and the, the Glock and the Taurus, some other models, this doesn't apply to the Smith & Wesson 
MMP subcompact. A buddy of mine showed me that, his takedown procedures. So, what we have to do here is there is a slide retaining pin that's blocked by this little clip. Now on your Glock it's going to be different, but basic same idea. So I'm going to get that out of the way so I can get to this retaining pin. Now, here's where the Glock and other striker fires are similar. Grip the firearm, good grip here at the back, reaching over top of the slide. Notice my hand is not in front of the muzzle, okay? I'm going to rotate it over. Still, I'm in a safe direction. Just trust me off camera. There's nothing over there. And I've got to pop out the little retaining pin that you saw a minute ago while pulling the slide rearward ever so slightly, as you can see there. Out comes the slide retaining pin. Now, this is the step with Glocks, Tauruses, this Ruger, many striker fired weapons that if I have done my clearing procedures backwards, right? If I have emptied the mag or emptied the chamber first, then dropped the magazine that was loaded, I still have a round in this chamber. So let's pretend I have a round in this chamber, okay, for the sake of this example. I have to pull the trigger in order to release the slide. It's going to fire. Now, if I have a round in this chamber, it's going to shoot. Okay? Now, Ruger has a dummy magazine that you use because Ruger and many firearms, they have a magazine block, safety block, that the trigger will not pull, as you can see, if there's not a magazine in. So you use this instead of a real magazine, just some extra step precaution, so that you can actually pull the trigger as you see here it's pulling. Now, I'm going to pull the trigger so that the slide can go forward. Now, as you can see, I didn't have a round in that chamber. Had I had a round in that chamber, like the YouTube video where a gentleman did that, the gun goes off. Okay? It's not good. Now, trigger's pulled, off comes the slide, pull out the uh, slide guide rod and the recoil spring, pull the barrel out of, from the slide, and there we go. Firearm is now disassembled, ready for cleaning. Now, how does this differ from a hammer-fired weapon? Okay, Remember, this one required me to pull a trigger just to get it apart, which causes it to actually dry fire. If there's a round in that chamber, it goes off. So let's see how a hammer fired is different. So, here's my Ruger uh, SR-22. It's pointed in a safe direction. Step, uh, uh, step one, I'm treating it like it's loaded, okay? Now, I have it pointed in a safe direction. Clearing procedures, pull the magazine first. Here comes the magazine. Always, even though this isn't a striker fired, always, always, always pull the magazine first. Magazine's out. I now need to take down the slide. Now, different guns have different methods of doing this. On the Ruger, there's a little clip here at the bottom that you pull down out of the way. It's actually a really neat design of all the ones I've played with. And uh, it comes loose. Now. Oh, did you catch what I did wrong? All right, I just did. I dropped my magazine, but I didn't clear my chamber, did I? So I'm going to put that clip back up, and I'm going to fix my clearing procedure. See, even I make mistakes. So weapons on safe, I've dropped my magazine. I'm going to lock my slide to the rear, as you can see. I'm going to look down in that chamber. I'm going to make sure I can see daylight. It's really hard with this 22 because the because uh, the because uh, it's so small. But I can reach my finger in there and feel for a round. I can reach down in the magazine well. I can check up in the magazine well and make sure this gun is empty. Okay. Now, now I'm ready to proceed with taking uh, taking it down. Slide back forward. I'm going to 
We'll open that little clip again. Now, the Ruger SR22, there's a, for taking it apart, it's best to put it into fire mode so that the hammer can lock back, which lets you pull the slide off. Okay, hammer's here at the rear. So I put it on safe. S slide comes back and it just comes forward. Off comes the slide. Here is the guide rod and recoil spring. And now that firearm is disassembled and ready for cleaning. Now, as you can see, I've got ammo laying here. That's because I was doing these clearing procedures. Now, if you're cleaning your handgun, you don't want your ammunition anywhere nearby. Okay, so make sure you get the ammunition out of the way. Push it off to the side. That way you don't make any accidents, any mistakes. Okay, I'm not actually cleaning. I'm doing a demonstration video. There's the caveat. Don't crucify me for it. Now, back to the point of the video. This handgun... The striker fired gun, as you recall, I had to pull the trigger, making the gun fire, in order to take it apart. Hammer fired weapon, never had to pull the trigger and it disassembled. Okay, now, what does that mean? Does that make a striker fired inherently less safe? Absolutely not. They're perfectly safe, excellent firearms. Just ask the FBI and so many other uh, police departments. What this means is that your clearing procedures must be perfect, okay? You saw me mess up my process with the Ruger, okay? Here I am making a demonstration video and I mess up on camera. I'm going to leave this on just for that example, okay? I'm not going to edit it out. But your clearing procedures have to be perfect. Always, always, always. It doesn't matter if it's a handgun, a rifle, a shotgun, pump action, semi-auto, bolt action, lever action, fully auto, doesn't matter. Always, 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 first step, get the magazine gone, okay? Get the magazine out of, out of that weapon, okay? Then proceed to clear, clear the chamber as necessary. Thank you for watching.